Hey there, Crown Corner family. It's your host, Crown, back with another round of incredible jaw-dropping stories that you won't believe happened. Today's episode is all about misunderstandings and the unexpected heroes who come to the rescue. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss a single minute of this. So grab your favorite snack, get comfy, and let's dive into these wild tales. But before we do, if you're new here, welcome to Crown Corner, where the stories are as diverse as our awesome community. I had rented out a room in a house with the current owner and occupant of the joint. I gave him a deposit to move in and the first month's rent. Everything was good. I did my job. I paid my rental obligation. Privacy was respected. After six months of living with him, I finally got a better paying job and left. The agreement was that when I left, I would get my deposit back the week after. A week goes by and the landlord goes, I'll get it next week. Another month goes by and again the landlord goes, I have not forgotten about you. Well now, it's been two months and he blocked my number. I'm mad as hell I want my money. Now I plotted my revenge. See, the landlord was a drug fanatic. Halfway through my first month's rent, he showed me in the basement of the house his 20 pot plants. He was growing into mature plants to run a distribution ring. He also had a drug den room where he could use crack to get a fix along with ecstasy pills. While I worked hard at my job for not the greatest pay, he took unemployment and disability benefits while doping up back at home. The landlord also had an extensive weapons collection, firearms which were not registered in his state, as well as firearms not registered under him. The landlord also had his own drug dealer that would show up to drop off dope, among other things. The landlord did this the entire course of me being there. He thought he was safe until he started screwing with my livelihood. So I wrote down everything I could remember and did my research. Behold the powers of search engines and the internet. Bang. Crime Stoppers. Fine print. Get $1,000 for your tip. Bingo. I fill out every minute detail, timestamps, photos of the growing operation, photo of the house, contacts, his entire life I had information on. Submit everything and give credentials to wait. My deposit was $350, so pocketing an extra $650 is completely worth it. He thought I wouldn't be a snitch, but you backstab me. I'll screw you over so hard. Parents lived in the neighboring town. I asked them to forward me the town newsletters. And I also looked at the county police and news updates. Four months later, I see it in bold. Drug operation busted. The police got a wiretap warrant on his phone and staked out his property. The seriousness of drugs and weapons mixed. The ATF was also involved with the DEA. A SWAT team executed a search warrant and busted into his house in the early morning hours, around the times I told when he was asleep. They seized everything. He is looking at about 40-60 years for his offenses. On top of that, the police also apprehended the other druggie who delivered to him in the middle of the night. I don't know when, afterwards, but at some point in time, Crime Stoppers helped me set up how I wanted my $1,000. The evidence was pretty damning. I got my revenge, but I also saved the community. It had started off as a good day until I went shopping at the local safe stay. With what's going on in the world, I was determined to not linger and moved on about my shopping with purpose, not lingering anywhere unless I had to, such as in the case of posing to read a label. I did pause to help one elderly lady who asked me politely if I could get something off a top shelf for her. That was my mistake. I turned to go back to my shopping when I heard, ahem, excuse me, the call of the wild Karen. Before I even turned, I popped out the words, I don't work here. Never did. Turned as I spoke and there before me was a living meme. Every inch a Karen. You helped that old hag, she screeched. So don't try to tell me you don't work here. I helped her because she asked politely for my help, you rude old witch. Unlike you, you are rude, so you can just toddle off and take care of your own shopping. And by the way, I don't work here. I said sharply to her, turned and went back to my shopping, steadfastly ignoring her screeching and yelling. She followed me all the while screeching for a manager. A worker approached to see what was going on and she yelled to get a manager immediately. The worker scuttled off not wanting to deal with an irate customer to find a manager. I can't hold her to any blame here. It didn't take long for a manager to show up. She, 
the Karen, started yelling how I was rude to her and refused to help her while at work and blah blah blah. When she was informed that I'm just another customer, she went crazy and got much louder, insisting that I do work there and she saw me helping someone else. It was then she made a huge mistake. I turned and stepped a few feet away to grab something I was getting anyway when she screeched and charged after me. She made a grab for me determined to see me punished for not being her servant. I dodged her easily and stepped aside, letting her rush past. When she did, she tripped and fell flat on her face and didn't immediately get up. I never touched her. She did it to herself. If that were the end, you all know I wouldn't have posted here. By the time she started to stir the police and an ambulance had been called, police arrived first, within five minutes, so must have been nearby. They were checking her over as best they could without moving her when she started stirring and trying to get up. Of course she tried to say I shoved her and assaulted her, but the manager had already told them what happened, they would view the security footage when she had been seen to. She was a mess too, bloody all down her front once she was able to sit up, probably from a broken nose or teeth, I'll update if I find out. I wasn't cuffed as I was being calm and not angry, if anything, I was concerned for her. The paramedics arrived shortly after and did their thing and hauled her off on a gurney. The last thing she yelled is that she was suing everyone, very loudly and very rudely. I pointed at the ceiling and said, security cameras, good luck with your suit. The police took a look at the security footage, got my name, address and phone number and sent me on my way. I'm puzzled at how nearly everywhere I go someone thinks I work there. Most people are polite and even apologetic when informed that I don't work there, but some, they make shopping or getting out a hilarious and annoying adventure. Hey you. Yeah, you enjoying the stories. If you're loving what you're seeing and want more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's just one click for you, but a huge support for us here at Crown Corner. Don't forget to drop a like and comment below with your thoughts on today's stories or share your own crazy experiences. We love hearing from you and often feature comments in our upcoming videos. All right, let's jump back into the action. Now a fresh cup of tea, check. Badger forged axe, check. Complete unwillingness to admit it's after midnight and I should go to sleep, yep, and on we go. On this assignment, I was to go into the call center of a paper and printing company to try and find out why, what should, on paper, have been a successful business wasn't performing. Employee turnover was high and highest in the call center and morale was in the crapper. So far just another task? I rocked up Monday morning off the shelf cotton mix shirt, power tie, trousers that were a little too short and the general air of defeat of a man whose life has very much not gone to plan. In short, a bad office manager's wet dream, a pre-beaten employee. A chipper little thing took me off for my induction. Don't touch anyone's bottom, no stabbing management and you cry on your own time. Seen one, seen them all. And I was dropped off with my trainer to start shadowing them. Now for someone in my line of work, shadow days are some of the most valuable because I'm being told to watch and ask questions and no one suspects anything so they just answer anything without thinking. The order system was pretty much idiot proof. The phone calls scripted by section, cold calls, regular customers, complaints, you get the idea. But there was something soul-sucking about the office. It was weird. Then in scuttled Margaret, obviously not her real name and I'm bored of Karen, she had a face like she could at all times smell something awful. A terrible 80s perm. This was way after the 80s. And despite plain sturdy office wear, she always wore an exceptionally ugly cardigan over her clothes. Don't get me wrong, not the same cardigan. She seemed to have an infinite supply of knitwear and eye-gouging combinations of orange, brown and mustard yellow. Some of you may be thinking that the villain has arrived. Spoiler sweetie, as soon as she scurried in, and she did scurry. Never really stood up straight, just kind of slouched a little and never looked right at you. Always had her head at an angle, what little energy there was in the room, when just gone. Most folk just huddled over their phones, but two middle-aged women scurried over to Margaret, obviously copying her movements, and they all went into an office marked Office Manager. This pretty much set the tone for the time 
I was in this office. Margaret and her bossy would sit in her office and gossip and backstab while everyone else was expected to carry the full load of the office. Margaret's little friends got the choice shifts and anyone who so much as looked like showing any spine magically found themselves working splits, nights and weekends. At first, I was baffled. How can she possibly be getting away with this? Well, it was three things. She wrote performance evals for all of her staff and because she'd been in the office since it opened, HR just rubber-stamped any termination she sent down. She'd managed to create supervisor but not a supervisor roles for her friends so she could justify them always getting the plum shifts or any time off they wanted because they were needed. She wrote the schedule and she approved the holiday and no one dared cross her if they ever wanted to see their kids again. She had a pretty sweet little setup. Shame that she wasn't as clever as she thought she was. I was getting paper for the printers in the morning when I saw one of the girls signing for a small delivery. The UPS driver brought up to our floor and just shoveled the boxes into a corner, stapled the manifesto on top, and wander off. Once she was out of sight, I went over for a quick shifty. I never signed for anything at work till I've checked it. Damn it! This manifesto was huge, easily three times as large as could possibly fit in the boxes. Margaret didn't work weekends. I did. This was Thursday, so I had to work fast. I called my boss and he had one of our team flown to where the office supplies were coming from where he was meeting a forensic accountant and some officers of the law. A second forensic accountant met me Friday night after Margaret had gone home. The setup was actually kind of brilliant. Margaret had befriended the lady who worked in shipping at the second company. She would place an order and then call her friend and fax her through a cancellation. Her friend would invoice the correct first amount, then refund the difference to Margaret's account, send the smaller order but with a larger invoice, and because Margaret was a micromanaging twat and didn't do it every shipment, she had been getting away with it for years. Monday morning swings around. Margaret scurries in, and the secretary tells her that the boss wants to see her before she starts for the day to discuss promotions and raises in her department. Margaret walks into the boss's big office, sits, and I walk into a big office, and I'm back in my armor. Tailored Henry Poole suit, tailored shirt, silk tie, I looked good. To be honest though, I don't think the witch even noticed. She was kinda distracted by the police officers who followed me into the room. The officers laid it all out very carefully for the boss. The accountant gave a very summarized version of what he had. Margaret was fired, cuffed, and led out of the building past all of the people she used to bully and abuse. Each order wasn't huge, though anyone who orders stationery for a business knows it ain't chicken feed. But it had gone on for long enough that the charges meant that she wasn't going up in front of a judge tomorrow morning. It took me quite a lot longer than usual to get that company retrained and on track. It's harder the older a business gets as people get so used to doing stuff the old way that they can't even imagine a better way. Still, by the time I left, a new office manager had been brought in, the shifts were fixed, the HR was down a dinosaur, and up a new recruit, and Margaret was still in jail. Well, it had started out to be a good day, a quiet morning at home, coffee and breakfast, a nice shower, then a loving snuggle with my love. I had noticed my pantry was a little bare when I fixed breakfast, so I decided to go shopping. Under normal circumstances, I'm one of those weird guys that actually enjoy shopping. But with what's happening in the world currently, I try to keep my out and about times to a minimum. This includes showing off my antique truck. Well, getting to Wally World was easy. Not that many people were there that early in the morning, so I relaxed a bit, headed in and started my shopping. Remember in previous posts of mine how I keep being mistaken for a store worker? Well, it happened again. Shopping was going smoothly and I was moving quickly to get it finished. Before more people came to Wally World, I stopped briefly to straighten a few things on a shelf that someone left in disarray when I heard the dreaded hmm, the call of the Karen in the wild. As an ex-serviceman and police officer, I learned to be polite most times but not be afraid to raise the bar so to speak, nice equals nice in return, rude equals rudeness right back at you. I asked without looking, yes, you need something? How rude, was the response. 
Then, shouted by the crazy Karen, Look at me when I'm talking to you. She then grabbed my shoulder and attempted to turn me to face her, getting madder when I forcibly slapped her hand away from my shoulder and told her, Touch me again, lose that hand. She shrieked, You assaulted me! Help! I'm being assaulted! Help! Now being ex-military, I know how to project my voice. I turned to face her and shouted at the top of my lungs, literally into her face. Enough. You grabbed me first as the security cameras will show. Shut your mouth and get this through that concrete block you call a skull. I do not work here. Now get the hell away from me before I do something we both will regret. She stood there stunned as if no one had ever dared to talk down or back to her in her entire life. That didn't last long though. I could see she was winding up for a tirade so I beat her to it. I said shut your mouth and get moving you old crow. My yelling must have been what attracted a worker who in turn called the manager, knows as M for the story. The manager came running into the aisle just in time to see the Karen attempt a slap, which was turned aside with some force leaving her, holding her hand. She spotted the manager and stomped her way over to him and started her nonsense about how that worker, points at me, was rude and yelled at me then slapped me and threatened to beat me up. I want him fired and arrested now. The manager separated us and talked to me himself while having a worker talk to her. I don't know, but someone had called the police anyways, and several of them came swarming into the place looking hell-bent for leather. We're directed to the aisle we were in and two confronted me, one confronted her, she immediately turned on the crocodile tears and recounted her story now adding, I was trying to kidnap her and rape her. It was then cop one knew he was lying. Kidnap and rape her? She stepped away and called cop two over to her. They talked a few minutes and came back and told us both they think it's best to go view the store's security camera footage. I have yet to see a Wally world that doesn't have them all over the place. So we were escorted to the office and the cops made us sit in chairs there. Me? I just kept quiet answering questions when asked. She kept on rambling, fake crying, and telling her story which changed by the minute. Hence, Crazy Karen. Cop 1 went into the inner office and came back out a few minutes later, stepped in front of me and asked if I wanted to press charges. What? The Crazy Karen spouted. He assaulted me. I want him jailed right now. Cop 1. After you grabbed his shoulder and tried to forcibly turn him to face you, she said to Crazy Karen, you are the one who started this whole thing and are guilty of assault. What would you like to do, sir? Looking at me. Well, assault is a very serious charge. Well, at the same time, she cannot be allowed to harass other shoppers like that. Tell you what, I won't press charges as long as she is banned from this woolly world permanently. She exploded at that and basically went nuts and started screaming as loudly as she could. No words, just wordless anger and hate-filled screaming. Then she got stupid, she grabbed a lamp from a close by stand and charged at me with it. Cop 1, Cop 2 and Cop 3 had her down and in cuffs in a few seconds, she never got near me with the lamp. Last I saw of here until a later date, which is a story in itself, we'll post that at a later time. Was her being dragged out in cuff, having to literally, having to be carried from her refusing to cooperate and playing ragdoll in an attempt to not be arrested. I thought I had seen crazy before. This one put them all to shame. Kind of like encountering a nuclear Karen or something like that. I didn't see her again until I discovered her in the Wally world, having changed her look a bit and hunting for me. After all this, I finished my shopping as quickly as I could, went back home and told my love what happened. He died laughing, he thought it was so funny, had me laughing after a bit too at the absurdity of that Karen. And that's a wrap for today's episode, guys. I hope you found them as unbelievable and crazy as I did. Remember, life is full of surprises, and sometimes they make the best stories. Thanks for hanging out with us at Crown Corner. Be sure to keep sharing, liking, and subscribing. Can't wait to see you in the next video. Until then, stay awesome, stay kind, and keep the stories coming. This is Crown signing off.